Good afternoon. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Date Thursday, December 4th, 2014. At this time, I'll ask everyone to stand for a moment of silent prayer. Afterwards, uh, Reverend Fleming will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Fleming. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you. At this time, school board mission statement will be repeated by uh, Reverend Fleming. The mission of the Portsmouth Public Schools is to challenge the minds, challenge the bodies, and challenge the dreams of all students while focusing on excellence. Thank you, Reverend Fleming. Uh, Chambers, roll call, please. Reverend Fleming. Present. Mrs. Hines. Present. Mr. Lamb. Present. Mr. Nance. Here. Mr. Parent. Here. An hour. Here. Dr. Whitaker. Present. Mrs. William. Here. Mr. Bridgewood. Here. All members are present. I call your attention to the agenda. Uh, for approval. Move for approval. Second. We move the proper second that we approve the agenda given in the discussion. If not, roll call, Madam Clerk. Reverend Fleming. Yes. Mrs. Hines. Yes. Mr. Lamb. Yes. Mr. Nance. Yes. Mr. Parent. Yes. Ms. Ridenauer. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Mr. Bridgeford. Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Parent, would you take us in the closed meeting, please? I move that the board enter into the closed meeting under the provision of section 2.23711 of the Code of Virginia for the following purposes. Number one, consideration of a request for religious exemption from school attendance as permitted under subsection A-1 and number two, consideration of various personnel matters including the assignment, performance, and resignation of specific school employees as presented under subsection A-1. Second. It's moving proper second that we're going to close meeting and discussion. Yeah, we'll call Madam Clerk. Reverend Fleming? Yes. Mrs. Hines? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Nance? Yes. Mr. Parent? Yes. Ms. Ridenauer? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mr. Bridgeford? Yes. It's unanimous. Well, we only meant this in the first Thank year, you. I think. Okay, roll Thank call, Madam Clerk. <laughs> Reverend Fleming? Yes. Mrs. Hines? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Nance? Yes. Mr. Parent? Yes. Ms. Ridenauer? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mr. Bridgeford? Yes. It's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Now that we're back out, uh, item number three, consideration of a religious exemption case number 2014-15 slash 03, Dr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Bridgeford. Yes, we do have a, a one religious exemption. We ask for a board member's consideration <coughs> with respect to case number 2014-15 slash 03. Move for approval. Second. Second. Move the proper second that we uh, adopt the religious exemption as requested in the discussion. Call my clerk. Reverend Fleming? Yes. Mrs. Hines? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Nance? Yes. Mr. Parent? Yes. Ms. Ridenauer? Yes. Dr. Whitaker? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mr. Bridgeford? Yes. It's unanimous. And as you read in the letter, it's so stated that uh, that individual or those individuals have ex exclusive uh, right and it's their responsibility for the education of their kids. Item number four for discussion, certain policies regarding MWBE. Dr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Bridgeford. At this point, Mr. Steele has information with respect to the policies or revisions of MWBE policies. Mr. Steele. Um, in, an, in this agenda item, um, what I've provided are, are two policies. One's the school board MWBE policy, and one's a related uh, school board purchasing policy that uh, I, we've provided with red line changes that are being recommended for consideration. Uh, we will look to have them for uh, up for school board <coughs> vote on December 18th meeting. And uh, uh, primarily they include revisions that address uh, cooperative contracts. 
and uh, right now the MWB policy exempts cooperative contracts, but we're remo removing the exemption, and we're, they're going to be considered in the uh, evaluation uh, of award. Currently, the spending on cooperative contracts is already counted under MWBE, but the upfront award and consideration of a cooperative has not been considered. So, uh, in the uh, procurement policy and in the MW pol MWBE policy, we address that. If you look at, there's also a form that's been developed in evaluating the cooperative policy, and it's the last page of the MWBE policy uh, in your attachment. So that's a new exhibit and a new form that will be considered. One of the other major changes is that we're looking uh, at contract renewals. Uh, in a lot of cases, previously, contract renewals were fairly automatic if the vendor was performing adequately uh, or, or, or well. And in this case, we will be looking at renewals to, uh, on a more comprehensive basis to include uh, looking at uh, MWBE compliance when we look at renewal. Um, the third item is school activity funds. School activity funds um, uh, uh, were never originally included in the data analysis of the MGT disparity study and in the, in the follow-on data that was uh, uh, accumulated for evaluation. The data that was primarily uh, um, evaluated was our primary financial system, which is MUNIS, which looks at our pr major purchase orders and contracts and spending through our accounts payable system in MUNIS. In addition, it looks at key card spending, but it didn't count school activity funds. When I say school activity funds, I'm not talking booster clubs. I'm not talking PTA. It's just those school accounts that uh, uh, have checking accounts in the name of the school, in the name of the district, that are using the school's or in the district's tax ID. So th those are the funds we're talking about. Um, so uh, we do have a separate uh, financial system that manages those and they're separately audited. And uh, that system recently was upgraded to allow us to pull the data a lot easier. So we're able to pull the data to look at the spend data, and that will be, uh, is, is proposed to be uh, incorporated into, the, into our vendor spend data that we're already doing. So we think it'll be relatively easy to do that, um, and it's just a question of just uh, pulling in another file into uh, the data that we already have. Um, and th th those are the major changes. Um, again, the red line version is there for uh, school board members to take a look at if you have any comments either now or before the 18th. Feel free to uh, let me know. Uh, both of these policies were presented to transformation and they uh, <coughs> provided comments. We've incorporated those comments. So this is, the, these two policies are uh, have been reviewed by both Transformation and the Administration. Um, and that's all I have about comments about these policies. Uh, there's a couple other things in this, this agenda item I can talk about them. Ms. Yes, could you explain again to me, because um, I wasn't here when we started with all of the Transformation Committee, why do we have to have school activity funds go through the transformation committee? They're not, they're not going through a transformation committee. They're, but they're purchases. <coughs> but, but they are purchases. They are technically public funds. <laughs> and, and in that regard, because they are public funds, just like the funds that are in Munis and just like the P-card funds, that's why we're, we're, we, we need to look at them. So when purchases are made from these funds, those purchase orders go to transformation for review? No. Most of these are small purchases, but uh, they're writing a check for something. But par part of the uh, MWB policy and even the purchasing policy is that they have to follow, number one, the Virginia Public Procurement Act. Right. And second of all, they have to follow school board policies, both on procurement and MWB policy. All right, Mr. Parent. Under um, <coughs> receiving, accepting, and vouching the goods for payment, 
you accounts payable must have the record of the following a completed purchase order receiving of goods and service or services and three is vendor invoice so we have a completed purchase order we have not received the goods and services <coughs> in the 120 days so the per so the purchase order is void because we haven't we have another policy we have a policy that after the 120 days that's our policy not the city's policy our policy is after 120 days if we haven't received the goods or services that purchase order correct me is that is is void and that's those funds are not in, they're not encumbered anymore um i think we're talking i think we're talking two different issues here i know i am but i i want to understand how the two interact i know there this is one policy but then we have another policy that affects this because we get into this thing with the city about encumbrances mm -hmm. and so you receive the goods but then you're holding up payment because you haven't received an invoice i'm just trying to clarify myself for the 120 day policy well in the in the traditional uh, procurement life cycle through payment is that you have to technically have like a three-way match so you have a purchase order or contract that develops the relationship with the right. vendor they perform the service right they send you an invoice right and then you pay on the invoice right uh, but I'm you only, you only pay on you, you only pay if you've got an invoice and you only pay if you receive the goods and services and they're acceptable to to us so in, in those cases that's called like a three-way match and then you pay the vendor now in the case of the 120 days in the encumbrances these are situations where we have a purchase order or a contract and we're waiting either for the good or service to be completed or the invoice it's an open encumbrance and in some of the cases where we've gone you know up to 120 days and we're still waiting maybe for a back ordered item or something like that and when we receive the back ordered item then we'll pay it and that's where the 120 days gets into the waiting period either for the good or service to be completed or the invoice well i was just you know reminded of what we went through as of june 30th then we had to then we had to ask the city in other words we had to ask the city to reauthorize money so that we could pay for for those encumbrances well we we didn't ask the city they they did read well i meant they <laughs> right we um, didn't and, ask and, for it but and, they at, and at this point uh as far as the prior fiscal year we did have some encumbrances that were going you know hitting up to 120 days and we asked the school board in those few that do go over we asked for approval and the school board approved right now as of right now we don't have any encumbrances from the prior year that are that are open all those have been closed okay um so i mean we're good in that respect good thank you Ms. Hass. Um, I'm looking under small purchasing because I'm thinking about the bookkeepers that sit at the school buildings that have to do all the POs, that have to do all the purchasing for the building, whether it's for the English department, whether it's for the basketball team, whether it's for soccer team. It's the last line in there says a list of available MWBE firms can be located at. How robust is that list at this point? Because for a bookkeeper to have to go and solicit their own MWBE, they're paid at a clerk's pay. So I'm, I'm just concerned about the workload on a clerk that where this will fall and it will, it will hamper their ability to do timely work and get things turned around because they are, most of them are a one person show at the building. We, uh, I mean, the the uh, not putting additional workload on the on the schools and the bookkeeper is is a concern. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but you might have seen uh, we recently had um, um, a three day training <coughs> session, which included most almost all the bookkeepers from all the schools mm -hmm. and departments and schools. And um, um, in that training session, all the, these procedures were going over what they needed what tools were available. A lot of them are already familiar with the, with the tools. In fact, th this program has been in, in effect and, and some of them were in the initial training two or three years ago and it was just refresher training. So um, uh, in, in a lot of cases, um, they, they have the, uh, an easy tool to find both online and we're actually gonna make it easier 
uh, with a couple other tools online based on the feedback we, that we got in the training to make it easy for them. But for school, we brought up the issue that, about school activity funds and schools actually want school activity funds to be included because a lot of the checks that they write mm -hmm. to local vendors down the street, et cetera, that support the schools, in, in a lot of cases, they're MWBEs. Mm -hmm. So some of the bigger contracts, you know, they're not getting uh, maybe credit for MWBEs, but in this case, they do. So they, they actually do want uh, the MWBE involvement with the, with the work they're doing with the school activity. I mean, I just know we have large <coughs> high schools that go through, that they spend a lot of money, and so there's a lot of work that goes through there. So I just, I want to make sure that they have the ability to choose from things that are purchase most frequently that there is a robust list list there there, there so is that a they're not having list, to solicit yeah. their own is a lot of what the, same, I'm going for. the stuff they order is the same thing periodically right. so once they they have that list mm -hmm. it's, it's relative it's a lot easier to okay do. <laughs> um miss brazil and i had a long conversation yesterday morning and she she said that the training is probably some of the most meaningful that she's seen um and was very encouraging um, and we went over the Muni situation with the activity funds and what have you. All in all, um, prior to her going back to Richmond, she seemed to be very satisfied with the three days of activities. So it, it's, it's good to hear a phone call with positive feedback on this. When I see her name come up on my caller ID, it was, it was indeed a very pleasurable conversation. As far as I know, so far it's going well. I went to the first training. Yeah, session. she was saying she was saying that. I hadn't been in over a year or so, so I took them up and. She said it seemed to be more interactive. It too, was and more natural. It was. And, and, that's, um, and that was good to see. Yeah. People were really asking questions. They were trying to make sure they got the questions there, and they were real life of what has been happening and the people that were that attended the session. She said there were several good ideas too yeah. that the um, participants brought out so it was it's, it's really worth it yes <coughs> okay anyone, anyone else yeah. uh, so uh, i want to pick to spin off on what uh, mr steele has indicated about the principles of wanting to use the small businesses um i, I guess in, in my efforts to to get around to each school and do the the fall assessment or pre-assessment um, one of the first things I shared with them is that I'm looking at two areas. Number one, that was their, their compliance with MWBE, and the second one had to do with the benchmark assessments. One of the first thing I hit, and I, before I go, I get the update from Chris Steele and to find out where we are with compliance, and I, you're not in compliance. You're at this percentage. Oh, no, no, I'm not there. I have ordered this. I've purchased mm. this. I've done this. And they're actually showing documentation and at that point, I'm saying, well, this is going through Munis. So that's when we really discovered that, hey, you're doing a lot in terms of the, 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 the policy, addressing the policy or in compliance with it, but you're just not getting it through because it doesn't hit our Munis system. So now they, Mr. Steele has worked it out with our, techno our technology, our tech ed people or technology people to actually uh, ensure that we can provide a system so that they won't have to go through so much red tape in the school. And Mrs. Brazil in transportation, uh, transformation has also uh, agreed to, to, to go ahead and provide a cheat, what we call a cheat sheet, so that the categories are there with MWBE and they, for everything they have that list, that robust list that you were talking about, Ms. Okay. So that's, that is in place. Okay. <clears throat> if there's no other questions on the policy, the other item that's in that agenda item is uh, uh, the MWBE, uh, the School Board MWBE Program Advisory Committee, which uh, has been around since the start of the program. Uh, they're, they're, the first term of the current members is coming to an end, so we've put out an application for new members to serve on a two-year term beginning in January. Uh, and the candidates, we're, we're planning, to, if we have enough candidates, to present them to the school board for approval at their December 18th meeting. A uh, copy announcement will be in the December 7th and 14th editions of the Currents, and it's attached in here also. We've also sent it around to the MWB Advisory 
uh, committee members so they can uh, put the, uh, the word out if, if, if we can uh, get some additional members. So uh, that's included in your package also. And that is all I have to report for this particular agenda. <coughs> Right now. How many people are on the advisory <coughs> committee that you're looking for new members? Um, well, particularly we're looking for members from the vendor community in different commodities. And uh, one, one, one member that I know we're looking for some uh, expertise in is in the construction facility area. And uh, uh, that's one, one vendor group that we're specifically But I mean, how looking. many people are on the committee? I believe I, I don't have the exact number. It's it's four it was, vendors. Well, and I think the plan called for. I think it was either five or seven. Five or six. Yeah. So all know. seven are being replaced. We're sending out information. Yeah, these are these are these are two two, two year terms. Oh. Yes. They can be renewed. Can that they renew? Oh yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Girl, we just think I like it. Okay. <laughs> Item number five, 2015 16 budget, initial goals and issues, Dr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Bridgeford. Again, Mr. Steele will be uh, sharing uh, <coughs> information for discussion tonight uh, with reference to the 2015 2016 budget. Uh, just some recommendations or suggestions and ideas for the initial goals and, and issues that may come up with our budget for next year. Uh, and, Mr. Steele, I'll turn it over to you again. Um, this particular agenda item is to give the school board a heads up. Uh, if you look at the calendar, we're still looking to get department and school input by December 17th. And then the rest of the dates um, through the end of December and into January show where um, uh, the school board finance committee is meeting the administrative budget team. Uh, one of the key dates that um, school board members may want to note is uh, around December 20th where the governor is going to submit um, his executive budget document regarding changes to the biennial budget. Um, again, as, uh, as talked previously, we don't expect K-12 budgets to be significantly impacted for this current fiscal year, but um, we're hearing from a number of sources that for fiscal year 16, the state budget for K-12 will not exempt looking at K-12 budget cuts. So uh, there is a possibility that, that we could see something there or some indication of what the governor's going to do on, on December 20th. So I, I point that particular date out. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Um, um, but I, school districts are uh, uh, very concerned. In fact, uh, one of the things that will be presented on December 18th as a resolution is a resolution that's being put out by the Virginia Association of School Superintendents and also Virginia School Board Association. It's kind of a joint thing where they're asking all school districts in Virginia to uh, sign on a resolution talking about the need to save K-12 funding and to restore a lot of the cuts that have been previously uh, uh, um, imposed, particularly at the state level. So that, that will be presented on December 18th. I talked about the revenue. The state outlook uh, uh, does not look that positive. The city outlook, initial comments from the city that we've heard is that uh, we shouldn't expect anything more than level funding. Um, there are, there are um, um, some, some good news. Last year we had uh, significant increases in VRS and health of over $4 million that we had to must fund over and above our previous base budget. Going into this, this upcoming budget cycle, VRS looks like it's going to be pretty level, so we won't have to worry really about a uh, significant VRS increase. And our health insurance, we'll know more in late December and January, but um, what's being reported nationwide is that health costs nationwide have been the lowest increase in, in a number of years. So we look that for that to be favorable also. Um, our budget strategy, just, just, uh, just a quick outline, is again, we're, good, we're looking at cuts to, to maximize the dollars that we have available, and we're looking at um, um, priorities that have been expressed in the previous budget cycle and since then. And I've listed a few of those that you'll probably be familiar with. 
uh, the top one is competitive salaries and looking at competitive salaries and making, maintaining competitiveness within the region, both for a COLA and looking at step increases, incentives for hard to recruit and retain positions, example, math teachers, uh, and increasing substitute teacher pay, uh, building back capacity and reducing class size for both teachers, teacher assistants, and some of the support positions. Again, holiday pay for 10-month employees, uh, increasing the standard work days um, for 10-month uh, employees, including bus drivers, technology improvements, increased teacher professional development opportunities, <coughs> increased tutoring, increased dual enrollment, decrease our maintenance backlog, and, build and continuing to build our athletic and band funding base. Again, pr in previous years, athletics and band wasn't even put into the base of the budget and relied on end of year funding we're trying to build that capacity up and, 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 and into the budget um, we're get um, we've been asked by the city to put together our FY16 uh, uh, capital improvement projects budget list and uh, in addition to the items that were last year um, we we're, we've got we're getting input from uh, facilities and IT uh, and athletics and a couple other areas and we're putting that together you'll see the full list of the submission on December 18th of what's been submitted that uh, we're looking at for, for going before the this uh, city um, and with that that's finishes my report on the 2015-16 budget and what we're looking at ahead any questions Right now, um, several months ago, <coughs> some teachers expressed a concern about why the students who fail their classes during the regular school year get to go to summer school free, and if a student who wants to advance and take <coughs> a senior government or something has to pay, I don't know how much money that involves with those students who failed and they don't have to pay, but maybe if they had to pay, they'd be a little more serious about trying to pass the class. Why, why, does, why is that? I mean, it seems opposite of what it should be. Uh, I'm not sure I have an answer to that. <laughs> the answer is that is a state budget. Uh, failing students go free and they, the others have to pay. As far as the, the funding from the state is concerned, there are funds available for student remediation and the summer school offers some of the best remediation for students and they they are paid for out of the state funds just one ma'am yeah I, I just have a quick question excuse me if i've missed it <laughs> so in a meeting or so forth i know there for a while we've been talking about especially under the category incentives for hard to recruit retrain positions um, especially math teachers we were having a, a conversation with regards to coming up with a possible plan to look at not only um, as far as pay and salaries, but to look at other incentives. Um, and I understood that there was a plan that was going to be in the works or was being done. Where are we with that? Uh, we're in the works, and I, I at the the time when the budget is finalized and that piece is in there that talks about incentives we want to share it we're doing uh, we're having some discussions with various universities now mm -hmm. uh, for example um, uh, thanks to Dr. Whitaker uh, he passed the name along Dr. Verma from Hampton University uh, we contacted Dr. Verma and he came in here just about two weeks ago to talk with Dr. Nichols, Dr. Taylor, and myself, putting some things in place that may help us from the very end of it. The issue is, that, uh, from what he tells us, and as far as the others are saying, there are not uh, mathematics teachers uh, going into, uh, math majors going into education. Mm -hmm. If they're there, the corporate world is grabbing them before they could even finish the program and right. paying them $90,000 and more, you know. Mm -hmm. 
so with that in mind, we're looking at some other things that are out of the ordinary. I won't say out of the box, because, yes. you know, but, it, but, but some things that may be different. Um, we have a lot of plans in place, and we, we're, at, we do plan to share them with you. Uh, <coughs> Uh, there are some incentives uh, already out there through the state compensation grant that we've been working with for the past year. Um, not all teachers choose to take advantage of it, and that's that within itself could be a, an issue because there, <coughs> there are some cases where teachers don't want to go and get higher level course endorsements. Uh, but there are some who do. So we're, we're looking at a number of things, Mr. Lamb, and yes, we, 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 um, we're on it, and we've got two more, we've gotten two more um, uh, bits and pieces of information from other universities, and then I've got one more we're going to talk with next week, and hopefully we'll be able to finalize our plan. Mrs. Paula Smith, our uh, human resources person, is also working with that uh, and checking with other school divisions, checking around the country. And she will have some things lined up for you with the budget. Okay. okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Steele, what, what was the city's rationale for suggesting to you that you should expect level funding? Well, when they, uh, they initially expressed that when we put in the resolution for reappropriation of the $1.7 million, and uh, we we indicated we were going to use it for a 2% raise, and they said we should use it, that, that that was reoccurring, and we should use it instead for a bonus because it's one time and wouldn't add on to next year's budget and not to expect an increased amount for next year. So it wasn't based on um, decreased revenue coming into the... Well, they, did, they didn't explain why it would... For them, it would be level funding. Uh, they, they didn't express it in that term. So it was almost like a punitive measure for not making it a bonus. Nope. Is that what, is, is uh, that the, because I'm we not, I'm not sure what their motive was, but it, maybe it was because of uncertainty <coughs> what the revenue is going to be that they didn't want um, to commit to anything. Very good. I, I'm not sure what their motive was. Are we looking at um, early retirement incentive packages again in fiscal year 16? That was discussed at the school board finance committee um, and talked about uh, the results of previous times to do that. Uh, and because of mixed results, uh, in general, it was felt that it would not produce significant savings for us uh, over and above what we are normally going to see as expected retirements every year. Okay. Item number six for discussion, 2014-15 Finance Review. Mr. Steele. Steele still on. <laughs> still there. Okay. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're not looking ahead to next year. We're we're looking at the current year and and, and what the impact is. Um, as you know, this this year the city put us under quarterly appropriations. So uh, they only give us money on a quarterly basis. So uh, coming up in January is going to be the third <coughs> quarter of the fiscal year. And on the city council agenda for December 9th is uh, going to be our appropriation. So they've already conferred with us. And uh, we gave them the numbers for their draft ordinance for the resolution. There doesn't seem to be any issue. Uh, right now there aren't uh, any uh, issues with category and anything else. So it looks like uh, we should expect to see that on December 9th and, and uh, they'll give us the third quarter appropriation. Um, anytime you're looking at what our revenue is going to be, you always want to be tracking ADM because the state revenue, a lot of it is dependent on student count and your final state revenue figures for the year are based on March ADM figures. So we're constantly tracking that. I guess I can just say that right now that our ADM trend is possible, positive. Dr. Fisher and I were talking about maybe some reasons why it's higher than expected right now, but, but our ADM is tracking higher than last year. And uh, uh, just to let you know, for every um, 
every person or average daily membership, you know, one person, we get approximately 6.1K from the state. So uh, every person counts, and, and that goes into the revenue figure. Um, I've attached just for your information, we covered it in a couple other places, uh, the <coughs> current FY15 CIP projects. Um, I, I will share with you that I had a meeting with the assistant city manager yesterday, and uh, you may know that we've gone back and forth with a memorandum of agreement on how we're going to conduct CIP. Uh, there seems to um, be an agreement with the city that they will go along with our latest version that we sent them and have agreed that the school board and the school district will be responsible for the purchasing and then the payment office will be the city but that will be doing the purchasing will be using our MWB policies and all the school board policies as it applies to our procurements and uh, uh, I, I guess this is a, a a positive development that it's we're finally getting off the dime on that to let you know the Woodrow Wilson fire alarm they did use our uh, basically our solicitation documents uh, and they had a bid opening on December 5th uh, and uh, or, or the bid opening is actually tomorrow at 2 p.m. in the city finance and we'll we'll see what how the Woodrow Wilson fire alarm bids come in um, as compared to the last time um, buses also we got final word or, or word yesterday, or it might have been uh, Tuesday. Um, um, the city now will be ordering the buses. Yeah. So uh, the order was either placed yesterday or, or was going out today. Um, Did they so, forget? <laughs> so so the, the buses are being ordered, and uh, and uh, it'll be nine regular 65 passenger buses, and this is part of the uh, CIP appropriation that was originally approved back in May of, of the year of $1 million for replacement school buses. And as you know, uh, we, we have a large number of our buses that are, are reaching uh, you know, the uh, expected lifetime. And so we want to get ahead of that curve before too many of our buses go, go uh, into an overage status. And Mr. Steele, these new buses will have a camera and the radio. The, okay. Yeah, the new buses have not only one camera, they have two cameras. All the new buses have dual cameras, you know, looking forward and looking back. And um, they, all they all come with the radio. So we, we, were try we were pushing to get these as soon as possible because, uh, and I talk about it later, is that we, we basically, once they come in, we strip the old buses and surplus them, but we strip them of the radios and cameras, and we use those as spares for, for the rest of the fleet. Um, the uh, uh, as far as the other uh, procurements that they hadn't started, and and those are the projects that are on the next page. Both the PA system for Wilson High School, the PA system for Churchland High, uh, the getting started with the engineering work on the West Haven Elementary roof, uh, getting started with the the, the uh, uh, A and E for the Woodrow Wilson High School roof. Uh, getting started with the A&E on the Churchland High HVAC. Um, all of those hadn't started yet with the city. We kept on asking them, when are you going to start on it? Well, well now it's turned around that, that they're going to allow us to go through with the procurement. So we're, we're, we're going to ask them. So, uh, that's, that's the latest status on that. What a difference in election. Um, the, uh, uh, the next item, and... Um, um, I think I, I'm going to ask uh, some help with uh, our finance director, Brittany Dorch, but uh, to talk about the F-14 carryover issues. As you know, we already uh, requested and the city granted us $1.7 million of unassigned um, fund balance from last year, and um, most of that we used for the 2% increase in raise. Well, we have some final numbers as we're going into completing the CAFR. Our audit's been completed. We expect Cherry Beckard, our auditor, to present the, 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 the audit results at the next board meeting on December 18th. But, um, Brittany, if you want to maybe highlight where we are with, with the final <coughs> fund balance availability and um, how that came about. So within that packet, 
there should be a sheet that has the unassigned fund balance figure that was originally reappropriated. And then it shows the new balance. And then there's a listing of potential uses. It's like this one. So as Chris mentioned, on 9-25, the city reappropriated the 1.7. With us continuing our process of finishing the CAFR and getting everything to the auditor and then finishing their procedures, the final unassigned fund balance number has increased by approximately 600 grand and is now $2.3 million. This additional increase is made up of several um, different items. Um, one is related to $209,000 of a reimbursement that we received from Optima. Um, our actual claims had came in a lot lower than the premiums that we, they were charging us. So we have a contract set up with them that you know we'll share in you know whatever that access is. So that's 209k of the 599. Um, additionally, there's over 300k. This was just a difference in our original estimate because we had to get you know what our unassigned fund balance was in September. That's very early in the CAFRA process, so we have to put together an estimate at the time. So through just truing it up, making sure all our accrual entries are recorded, another 380K was identified. And then there's a small 14K just from various just small items, but all of that together makes up that additional 600K that you see there. As you see the note below, I've just kind of wanted to point out that from that original appropriation, we're estimating that there's going to be 463K. Now this is a part of the 1.7 that we'll still you know, need to spend. But I want just to make sure to note that because we're going into looking at what are we going to use this money for. So you'll see a list there and you'll see a column where we have rankings but we have estimated costs for different uses for this 463K, which we've already have asked for reappropriation and received, and this 599K, which we'll have to ask the city to reappropriate to us. Together, those amounts are a little over $1 million, so we just need to figure out, you know, what are we gonna use all of this money for? So we tried to lay out a list of potential uses and wanted to bring it to you all to kind of look at, you know, what the money can be spent on and for you all to look and see, you know, where would you want to see this money spent? Because we'll need to specify within um, the appropriation that we're going to put before the city on how we're going to use the 600K. But we also want to make sure we, you know, have your input in how we're going to use what's left over from the 1.7 as well. So, so the resolution will be drafted for December 18th for the reappropriation of the 599,000. That's in the top top field there. Um, and this listing of items were these these were discussed with the school board uh, finance committee, but we wanted an opportunity for this. Full school, uh, school, the full school board to look at things that have uh, were already currently on on the radar as items that were being discussed. And uh, one item that I'd like to point out um, is uh, the pay study. There, there was a lot of discussion with uh, different employee groups about um, some inequities in our pay classification system, especially with the fact that in a lot of cases we haven't had a step increase for a while. So you have brand new employees making the same as uh, employees that have been here for a while. And also over time uh, <coughs> that based on competing districts or whatever the market is for a particular um, uh, labor group or profession is that we might not be competitive. So the, the idea here would be to engage with a pay study that, that would go in and do those things that were previously done at here at Portsmouth Public Schools, I think in 2005-06. Uh, and, and the last time that was done, uh, they uh, 
came up with, I guess, a report, but also included a budget implementation. There was a, like a three-phase implementation. And my understanding is not all phases were implemented. Only, only uh, one out of three, I think, phases were implemented. All right. <clears throat> I think it was our understanding that um, we would ask the board like we did with the must fund to rank order your priorities and uh, then submit it to Dr. Fisher and then we can look at how we as a board as a team feel what is should be number one number two until you get to that that magic number because I think we can all sit here, sit here tonight and lobby for what we think but I think that that was uh, that was our intent yeah. Mr. Chairman I think that's what we had had talked about asking the board to rank order and then submit it and then we take a look at what we feel as a board should be the top I mean as much as much as we can do with that money and the six hundred thousand well the five ninety nine that you need to rank order is that well actually it'll be the five ninety nine plus, plus the four sixty three so okay so about it's another million the the um the forty thousand for the bus drive additional cameras is that still a issue with the new buses not with the new buses this would cover uh older buses that um previously the standard was just one bus one camera on a bus and our newer buses are coming with with two and the, pr the preferred setup is to have two so this would actually retrofit those buses that only have one to get an additional camera which helps in a lot of situations when you're investigating you know what's what's going on is the spring break <coughs> month non-exempt employees is that something that has to stand at spring break or is that something that can be adjusted to earlier than spring break um, it would probably if, you, if you're asking about winter break it would probably be too late to, when voting on December 18th um, the spring break is what month <laughs> so my question is does it have to remain for April or can it be done earlier in the year it could be done earlier in the year I think that the last time we met uh, we prepared <coughs> a spreadsheet that showed the different holidays throughout the year and what the value was and the two big ones I think of course were the winter break and the spring break <coughs> And then all the other ones were like one or two two-day holidays uh, that we also had a cost for. So, I mean, certainly there could be different variations of all those different holidays uh, as part of. Uh, and I the see the I see the breakdown here, but are teachers are teachers included anywhere here for ten-month employees? You mean? Well, I'm just saying in potential uses. I don't see it. I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm, not I'm asking. No, not, not specifically other than if if we're talking 10-month employees that is applies to not teachers but instructional assistants, those, those, those are there. And I think the, the emphasis was on the fact that they were out spring break for a week or whatever and mm -hmm. did not have any pay. Right. 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 So they, they get their pay the other times, and we were talking about the holiday pay right. and and the spring break pay. That was what I thought they were. That's right. <laughs> and we missed the holiday pay. We just skipped over it. For December, you mean? What do you mean? For December? Did we do anything about holiday pay? I, uh, up to this point, we have not. No. Right. Um, the, did 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 we talk about at least doing a few days or something for the December holiday pay? Didn't we? Well, I thought we, everybody's getting across the board two percent. Mm -hmm. We did the right one. Check next week. Oh right, we moved that up early. Right, moved that that up. and then we talked about in in twenty the, the next okay. budget we're working on that we would look at right it would okay. be in the budget for it would be in the budget for 2015 2015 so two percent 
will be applied next week. They're going to get it across next week. the board. Across the, the board. board. Okay. Right. Say, it to, say it to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> We've been saying it, Joe. But the other thing, but the other thing that you had mentioned about was there anything in here for teachers? Uh, when we looked at the academic professional development, that $150,000. All of that, if you look at the, the comments and note, all of those things are for, for teacher training, especially with advanced, advanced placement, placement, SAT, and dual enrollment. <coughs> that's what we really need. When we talk about rigor, yeah. that's, what yeah. we, that's where the training is needed. So, If I may, what, what we attempted to do, once he gave us a staggered figure of how much it would cost each day if we did certain periods, we looked at it and said, let's see if we can give them half right off the bat. And that's why we got 287. And we figured if we could satisfy that need, that would be the most. That's the largest portion of it. If we go can't ahead. enforce that part, then we'll go back and look at the, giving it to us smaller portions. But what we try is to attempt to give them the largest one first. It's about just like. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Do we want them to yeah. rank order and yeah. have that ready? And we, yeah, we, because we do want to put it on the agenda for yes. the 18th for what, whatever the high priority is for the, and ask for your consideration of, a, of approval on that 18th. We're going to use this list? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you could p pass, get those in back in to, uh, to CAP and yeah. collect them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we doing that by? Evening. I'm sorry. Are we doing that by email? If you can get it to Kathy yeah, by email, email, that would help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she can fine. compile it and then tell us what what the board is. It is number one, two, and three. Okay, Mr. Steele, do you have anything else? Um, and then related to this item and some of these things we already talked about, but um, has to do with uh, transportation update and some of the safety uh, proposal. Uh, we already did talk about the fact that a uh, customer service training was conducted on November 21st with uh, all the leadership <coughs> and um, staff over at uh, uh, operations and transportation. And we did we, we talked about these, but I'll go over it again. On, on the radios, uh, all the radios are working except for one active bus radio is currently out where we're using a cell phone. Ten uh, radios have been received and uh, w these are ones that we just ordered uh, and the frequency programming was completed yesterday as a matter of fact and transportation will have the new radios tomorrow one for the one bus and then the other nine will be used as spares um, cameras all active buses are now outfitted with at least one the transportation and we talked about it on the other list as requesting 40k for a second camera in the buses that only have one one camera um, one of the things we were trying to do is boost the coverage within the district and um, we talked about having a repeater and it was proposed that it be put on the city's antenna where they have the other emu emergency communications. Uh, the statement of work is uh, just about complete. There were some cabling requirements that were identified that uh, the vendor is providing to us and some last minute coordination with the city we were completing but we should have that uh, uh, fairly soon and when we talked about the new buses the city did agree to order the new buses nine regular 65 passenger buses three special ed wheelchair ba uh, buses uh, are being ordered and again these will have uh, radios and two cameras and the old buses will be surplused and and those cameras and uh, radios will be used to spare so we'll have uh, a lot of spares uh, once the new buses come in and again one of the issues of having adequate supplies and cleaning supplies and disinfectants for all the school bus drivers that information was put out to all the bus drivers etc and I can tell you that uh, half the bus drivers have come in and have been given supplies and, and there haven't been any back orders or anything else they've been given the supplies to please tell me they all have brooms <laughs> yeah whatever they needed basically <laughs> the brooms was one it. one of the things so whatever they wanted on their you know <laughs> for their bus for that all they they provide brooms thank you so um that's and that's the, the update on that and uh the additional um 
attachments in here give some additional in, uh, information on <coughs> the current CIP projects for for this year and the ones that were not funded from last year's submission are on this list but we'll be adding to this list those additional projects that we're putting in for FY16 um, and again those will be presented to the board on uh, December 18th. <coughs> what firm or, or vendor did you use to do the customer service training? Who did that? Actually, that was internal, I internal uh, staffing, and they did. Uh, I, I I was I attended, and they I, I thought they did a great job. Who, which department? Human resources. Oh, human resources. Just just one final thing. Did did we get the uniforms? For the crossing guards. For the crossing straight, guards. With, yeah, with in fact, they they're they're also in stock in, in the uh, uh, in the warehouse, and yeah. those uh, that information was put out for those crossing guards that needed to replace torn or, or damaged ones or even items they never. Did they had come before. in and pick pick up what they needed? Uh, I didn't get uh, a number on that, but I was told that uh, a number did come in. I don't have half or anything. I don't know exactly what. Yeah. But that's been resolved. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Item number seven, review of the agenda for Thursday, December 18, 2014. Dr. Fisher. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bridgeford. After Mr. Bridgeford calls the meeting to order, we have a moment of silent prayer. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance will be, as well as the statement uh, and the musical selection, because you know this time of the year, we like to bring our, our preschool students in. Mr. Wiggins has already coordinated that activity with the principal of Olive Branch um, Preschool, and they're ready to uh, do their performance for it. So they will take the stage uh, at the beginning of our meeting. School board mission statement, with Reverend Fleming uh, has that for the month of December, and will do so on the 18th. Uh, attendance by will be done electronically, and taken by Kathy, our school board clerk. Uh, Following that, we'll ask for approval of the agenda, uh, Mr. Bridgeford will, and then we'll move into a presentation uh, from WHRO. They come in annually to share or provide an update on the services and activities that are occurring there and with our uh, particular uh, facets of our <coughs> schools. We have a presentation also on the comprehensive annual financial report. Um, as Mr. Steele has indicated, our, our auditors will be here, uh, and Brittany, uh, they will be here on the 18th to share um, that report with board members. Following which, we will have a recognition of, uh, of our retiring school board members, uh, and uh, we'll follow. Who they are yet? Retire recognition of school board members okay and then we'll move on with the consideration of resolution recognizing Virginia principals appreciation week mr. Wiggins uh, is the uh, the voice for our resolutions and he will be mm -hmm. doing that as well as the resolution we need to add to that the Virginia School Board Association as a VSBA funding resolution uh, that we've added to uh, that <laughs> I think Mr. Steele alluded to that early on, where well, the superintendents and the uh, school board um, on a record for the funding resolution. You don't have it, Mr. Wiggins? No, it. Do you have that? Yes, I have it. Okay. May, may I ask, uh, that's, a, a four, that's about a four-page resolution. Is Mr. Wiggins going to read the four pages, or can we... No. Does it have to be read because it's pretty lengthy? No. It, it, I mean, it's it, a great resolution, but you'll be up there. It, he got, you going to... Summary. I didn't know if there was summary. Summary. you have to read because of the right. He he has a summary. And, and Very then, good. But the entire resolution. Thank you, Mr. Wiggins. Okay. <laughs> great resolution, but we'd be there all night. Okay. Uh, following that, item number six will be recognition of schools with the high. Mr. Wiggins will stay at the podium again, <laughs> and he will do schools with the highest attendance for the month of November. Uh, we will have consideration of your minutes. Uh, and, and Kathy um, Chamberlain has four uh, to be approved for um, that particular meeting. Public comments will follow on non-agenda items. Dr. Helen Taylor, 
will be presenting the monthly report for the Department of Curriculum and Instruction. Dr. Taylor, any comments on your report? It would be a regular mm -hmm. report, Dr. Fisher. Okay. Which is Mrs. Smith, and I know Ms. Smith is back there. Any comments on your human resources report? It would be a regular report. Dr. Routine report. And she will follow that with employee transaction report. Uh, Mr. Steele will have item number 12, a budget and planning report for the month of uh, November, for December. Mr. Steele, any comments on your report? Um, you a lot of it will include some of the items I discussed here that we were deferring to uh, December 18th. And you are adding the consideration of contract for food service equipment as well as item number 14, the financial report for 14 and the financial report for November, item number 15. We'll also be asking for consider your consideration of certain policies regarding MWBE, those that you heard tonight from Mr. Steele, uh, with those changes per the um, input from uh, transformation. Uh, that will be on the agenda to, uh, to elicit your approval. And I will conclude with the <coughs> superintendent uh, uh, report, uh, interim superintendent's report for the month of, uh, of December, uh, following which uh, we will have consideration of the appointment of a division superintendent and approval of a contract for new superintendent. Uh, we need to add to that uh, the student discipline, we'll add that in on the agenda somewhere because we do have one case that will be coming before the board uh, during that meeting. Uh, and then we will conclude with board members' comments and concerns. Mr. Bridgeford. Okay. <coughs> All right, thank you, Dr. Fisher. <coughs> okay, item number eight for discussion, board members' reports. Uh, Mr. Parent, and then Ms. Ratnar. At the, um, <coughs> the SBA conference, uh, I attended several sessions, and I wanted to give the board a copy of this. Um, this is a, a the interim report by the Standards of Learning Innovation Committee that's been appointed. And they made it very clear that this there was a lot of discussion and I call your your attention to item when you get this look at item number three which recommends uh, schools must might be accredited annually every three years or every five years number four opportunities for on demanding testing um, and then number five students in elementary and middle schools levels who have failed an SOL test that in other words, they could score a three of uh, three seventy-five. Possibly could do a retest. Um, number six deals with uh, uh, different ways, identify alt alternative ways of student to accrue uh, standard credits outside the traditional seat time. And number nine, um, looking at, of course, recommending that a revision of a schedule so that the division has sufficient time. That's been a complaint. Because you know, when they introduce new the new standards, you have the two years, and, and there's not enough time to get teachers trained. So number nine is good, and of course number eleven is one that we all want uh, all want funding. So I just bring this to your attention. They did make a comment that the reason this committee has made this recommendation, there were a lot of comments from superintendents, because there was a lot of uh, stress with this report, and they made it very clear that. They wanted this ready for the General Assembly to act to act on this and have some recommendations. So this is just, please understand, this is really draft. Because there were there are a lot of superintendents, there were a lot of board members that had some heartburns, and I just highlighted the ones that were of, of more interest uh, and possibly have a better chance of, of getting through. But um, this is just, please understand, it's draft and you'll see more about this when it comes out of the general assembly but they wanted the committee had to have a recommendation to the, the governor and and so it could be presented to the general assembly so that concludes my report that's right now <clears throat> thank you i have two quick reports um recently when i was at the cube conference i went to one session that was very 
genuine and emotional and caring about that bottom group of at-risk kids. Not just the at-risk kids that are in our classrooms, <coughs> but those that are at risk of never coming back to school because there's no one that cares about them. And this one group presented their program and their organization. Um, and I think maybe there were three other cities that presented also their programs in different parts of the state, mostly up north. But what was so meaningful about it is the way it worked, it was a group of four people to each program. They took a kid they found in the community um, that maybe people in the community knew needed help. And they became the mentor to that student. They'd go, if they had to, to the house, wake him up at 6.30, Make, if he didn't have breakfast, they'd take him to get breakfast. They'd take him, they became the mother, the father, the family of the <coughs> child. And even if the household needed something, <coughs> they included the whole family in it. It was just a very pointed focus on saving at-risk students, one at-risk student at a time. Um, I gave most of the handouts. Um, I hope Dr. Shepard, Dr. Shepard meets with the counselors every Monday from middle and high school to talk about what we can do to save our at-risk students. So I gave this just to look at. You know, in brainstorming, it may give them some ideas. There was a textbook that they, not a textbook, but a book that had been written that they gave me called <coughs> Care and character. And that was how you save an at-risk student. Um, so I don't know if y'all looked or use it as, you know, um, stuff, but it was just FYI for information. We go to so many <laughs> conferences and we learn so much that's very meaningful to the population we serve. So I think we need to come back and share it with our staff and with you. Um, the other report, you know, sometimes circumstances mess us up in doing what we want to do or what we want to continue to do. Back in April uh, at the VSBA Leadership Legislative Conference, during a break, I went over and spoke with um, Gina Patterson, the executive uh, director, and told her my concern and um, desires to do some research on um, school board independent physical authority. And we talked a little bit. I told them some ideas that I had. She took me to uh, Elizabeth Ewan, who is the, our policy person, and to Emily Webb, who is our lobbyist for General Assembly. I told them I'd like to do some research. I'd like to contact all the state boards and see how they felt about it and present all of that to my board to see if we would be interested in taking that step to begin the process, knowing, you know, it's a process, two or three years. Well, Elizabeth said, Linda, if nobody starts it, it'll never get started. And uh, Emily Webb said, Linda, get it all done, get your board on, and we will present it to the General Assembly this spring, and we will lobby for you, myself and Pat Lacey. So for the last eight months, that's what I've been doing, gathering research that I wanted to bring to you, prepared better than I have tonight, um, so that you know you could read and consider and see if it's anything you wanted to do. I have spoken with um, Gina Patterson and sent her a request for a survey to go out to all of the boards just saying are you interested in uh, independency or not? Just circle yes or no. And she will do that on our behalf only if all of you want to do it. I have here uh, for your information only, a copy 
of about eight different pieces of research that I've done. There's little snippets of about what that represents. The information that I've collected is about this thick, so I ran out of ink just running these for you. But I'd like for you to have it and read it, and maybe since uh, I won't be here to push you, maybe somehow somebody else will take up the cause. Um, one, well, let's see. One, two, three. Put that away and the rest of that. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Just a minute. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, next week's going to be a busy week, but next Thursday during the day, I'll be, I've been invited to attend the Joint um, Task Force Summit on Changing Environments with the Governor's Office, um, VAS, um, VCU, and VSBA, and coming back here Thursday evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Williams? I'd just like to take this opportunity to say I think Dr. Pat Fisher, as our acting interim superintendent, has done an outstanding job stepping in when Dr. Stuckbush uh, retired and whatever situations have come up and we've called her and whatever we've asked her to do, she's handled them with uh, grace and class. And I just want to publicly thank you. Okay, no more board member reports. If there's no other business to come before this board, this board oh, is adjourned. Hallelujah. Praise him.